And in the meantime, be the best version of you you can be. Pour into God. Allow God to pour into you. Treat people so well. And just love on other people. And those friends will come. Hello, Higher Battle family. Welcome back to the podcast. Happy Monday. I hope you had the best weekend celebrating your dads or someone who is like a dad to you. And we are going to talk about friendships today. I know this is very broad. You can cover so many things when it comes to friendships, but one of you submitted a topic about how to make friends, walking through Christ-centered friendships, and just everything under that umbrella. And just so you know, if there's ever a topic you're wanting to hear, if there's ever anything you're going through that you really, really just want to hear on the podcast, please message me on Instagram or, or email me that topic, and I would be so happy to record a podcast for you because this podcast is for you guys and you know here on higher battle if you're new we talk about all things jesus but we also talk about walking together through the highs and lows of living a life for the lord so if you're new i'm so happy you're here friendships i don't know for some reason this just feels like a loaded topic because there's just you can talk about forgiveness you can talk about like there's endless topics when it comes to friendship. I've had good friends, bad friends, good situations. I've lost myself in friendships. Something that always comes to mind when it comes to friendships is knowing who you are apart from these friends. And I think growing up, I was very attached to my friends. I always had that one best friend or a couple best friends where you had the same schedule as them, you did everything with them, like every waking minute, you were either at each other's houses, their families felt like your family, and that is incredible and amazing to an extent. I think I really learned to cling on to people, and I really attached myself and my identity to my friendships. So as I got older and friends started to not be in that form and fashion, when, you know, as you get older, you can't always be with your best friend every waking second of the day. And so I really started to learn just how much my identity was rooted in other people instead of God. And so I think that's the interesting thing. And this can kind of even go into dating and singleness. It almost seems like God uses friendships to kind of teach you how to be your own person, how to navigate relationships, because obviously to an extent, of course, friendships are different than like romantic relationships, dating relationships, but there's still similar aspects in how you treat them and how you um, are both two different people who are caring for each other and loving each other and there's things you can learn in your friendships and if you can figure out how to find Christ-centered friendships and how to be your own person in those friendships, that's going to even carry on into dating relationships and who you are when you date, but that's a whole other topic. That's an important thing that I learned because whenever a friend naturally grew apart from me or whenever a friend did me wrong or was toxic, a toxic relationship. I never saw it and I allowed it because I was so rooted in that friendship. There were points in friendships where I would do anything to make sure I didn't lose that friendship. I've had ones where I was used, ones where I was just treated so poorly, ones where I was only a f their friend when it was convenient for them yet I hold people like so high and I I see the best in people and I hope for the best in people specifically back when I had friends like in high school and things like that and so I just saw the best in everyone I was like they are the greatest friend I don't want to lose them and so because of that I really got hurt so it's like, how do you root your identity in Christ? You see this common theme with everything. You need to have your identity rooted in Christ. And where are you finding your friends? And are you holding on to friendships that are one-sided or that don't truly care about you? And 
I still, just to say, just to clear the air, I have incredible friends from high school still and growing up that I love and adore. So it's not all my friends and not all my friendships from my past. But when I got to experience what it truly means to have a Christ-centered friendship and a friendship where they truly, truly love and care about you and look out for you and reach out and really, really care. I was like, oh, there's a big difference. And it's just crazy to get to experience the different kinds of friendships. And I think too, you're not going to be best friends with everybody. I think some of us go through stages where we just want everyone to like us and we want so many friends, so many best friends. But the older I've gotten, it's like your circle's smaller, but you have such quality people in that circle. And I think that's okay. Because I also went through a phase where I was like, I just want everyone to like me. I can be friends with everybody. But when you try to do that and you're chasing after everyone liking you and everyone being friends with you, there is a depth that you're missing. And it's really, really cool how deep your friendships can be when the Lord is involved. And when you have people stepping up and praying for you, like I know no matter what circumstance or situation I'm going through, there's going to be a friend I can call on. There's going to be people praying for me. The process of me finding these great friends, of course, God brings them about at the right time. But I did go through a lot of like heartbreak in friendships, a lot of like feeling betrayed, feeling really sad, lonely. So I like to say that sometimes friendship breakups feel way, way worse than relation, like romantic relationship breakups. And so I've been through that pain. I've been through confusion with it. And it's just cool to see that God will redeem that. So if you are sitting in these friendships that are either toxic or you just left friendships and you feel broken because now you don't have those people anymore that you always relied on, just know that God redeems that and he's going to lead you to your community. God's going to lead you to your support system. So just knowing that and trusting that. And I think a lot of my friends, I mean, I kind of found them all centered around the same idea. One of my friends I met through a Christian sorority. So we had that Christian um, situation <laughs> and then some of my absolute best friends I've met online, but I knew their heart and the way they shared their content. So it's like, you can kind of tell right off the bat if someone's walking with the Lord and okay, you know when you go on a first date or something like that and people will always say, look how they treat the wait staff or the people around them. Same thing with friends. You can go shopping with friends, go to church with people and how they treat other people it's probably going to be how they're going to treat you. How they treat their parents, their siblings, just their other friends is how they're going to treat you. So you have to kind of look out for those things. And as we get older, you have to be willing to kind of step out and get to know people, but also maintain those, like, we're going to watch for this, we're going to watch for this. Like, you've been hurt in the past same with dating like you want to at least keep those lessons in mind and for me one of them was like there was a point in my life where I said I'm just gonna stop reaching out to these people and see if they ever reach back to me because I literally used to be that person that had to say Merry Christmas or Happy Thanksgiving to every single contact in my phone and most of them didn't even care and and I just sat back and reflected and, and I said, why should I text all of these people like once a year? They never reach out to me throughout the year. They never care what I'm doing throughout the year. So I literally stopped communication with some friends, some people. And yep, sure enough, they've never reached out since, never texted since. So it's like you want to pour the energy and time into the friends who are pouring energy and time into you. And yes, some people are busy. and when I have friends like that, we have mutual understanding and we reach out and we're like, I am so sorry. I love you. I'm going through this. I'm busy. Let's figure out a time to meet. There's communication. And so where do you find these friends? I mean, church, work, 
you can join maybe some like sports clubs in your town, some women ministries at your church or in your community, and don't go to a location hoping that you'll just instantly make a friend. I've noticed that too. You like deep, deep friendships build over time. You're not just going to show up to this new place and be like, bestie right there. I mean, maybe, but it's going to take time. Also knowing when to let friendships go. That has been my hardest thing to learn in my whole life. God has just naturally taken people out of my life because they were there for a time and season. And people in your life are not, some of them aren't meant to stay forever. And that was so hard for me and I never understood why. And I think God knew that I was so bad at that, that some of my friends had to literally just disappear, ghost. And it's it's interesting to see what God does and his, the tactics he uses because he knows us so well. And he's like, okay, I'm going to make this easy for her. This friend is going to have to just kind of grow apart, disappear and it's gonna it's gonna feel painful at first, but she's gonna be okay and that's what she needs. And it's true. So God knows you if you're in a toxic relationship, toxic friendship, just have the conversation with that friend, try to create that distance and God's gonna help you walk out of that and walk through that and he knows you very well and he knows what you need in order to grow and learn from that and also heal. So don't lose hope. <laughs> and I like the quotes where it's like, friends are the family like that we get to pick. Or friends are a true and beautiful blessing from the Lord. And we get to pick who we're around, you know. We get to pick who we're associated with. And if you ever feel uncomfortable or they're pulling you in the wrong direction, they're pulling you away from God, God's never going to punish you and say, what are you doing? I brought this person into your life. Why are you ending that friendship? No, he cares about you and your well-being and he wants you to be close to him. So anything pulling you away from God, anything that's making you just feel, you know that discernment. We all, ladies and guys, we know that feeling and listen to it because God and the Holy Spirit is so, so good about giving them, I don't know if you could call it like the ick, that might be too far. Giving you that feeling where you're like, I got to get out of here. This is not a good situation. This person, they're dealing with their own things. I cannot be friends with them anymore. And you walk away. I think too, with all the incredible friends I have right now, none of them were forced. Like, you know, when you're first kind of trying to build a friendship, who's your style and who's not, you know, in the sense of like, I feel like all my friends are different for sure, but I'm also someone who like, I have to have a friend or two that checks in like every day that wants to talk every day or almost every day and has that constant like back and forth like, hey, you alive? Yeah, I am. How are you doing today? You know, I needed that. And so that's kind of the style I looked for, I guess, in friends. And I know not all friends are like that, but I think knowing like what you need in a friendship and that doesn't that doesn't have to be selfish okay like friends are the ones who get to do life with you and you get to share fun memories with and you get to support them and see them grow and vice versa so you don't want people who are not supportive who are negative who just pull you away from god all the things so you can be picky about who you spend your time with who you're around and, and I give you permission, okay? God does too. That's not selfish to just listen to that and know what you need in a friendship. What I've noticed too, if you're just aching for friends, like you just feel like you don't have a support system, it's interesting how when you step into the arenas and areas God's calling you to and when, if he's calling you to a new place or you have that dream on your heart, whatever he's calling you to, there's going to be people waiting there to support you. There's going to be haters and there's going to be supporters. And it's interesting to see. I feel like a lot of my friends are from each different stages of just like me walking with the Lord and stepping into new areas. And I think a lot of times you would have never met some of these incredible friends if you didn't listen to God. Because listen to this, God does not want you to be lonely. He isn't punishing you. He isn't up there saying like, oh, ha, glad she's by herself. Glad she doesn't have any friends. 
No, we're built and created to live in community, to be with other people. Just like we're created to have a relationship with God, relationship. So he's not punishing you. Like you, I will be praying for you that you find those friends that you've been needing and looking for. And I know God's going to lead that to you because he's not going to keep it from you. And I don't know, maybe there's a level to where he's waiting for you to forgive a past friend or move on from a toxic relationship. I've noticed for me, there's a lot of growth that has happened in between these friendships that I have now that are Christ-centered and deep and they care about me and there's growth that had to happen in between. And one verse I want to share just about being together, not being alone is... Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12. Two are better than one because they have a great reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and has no other to lift him up. Again, if we two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though a man might prevail against one is alone, two will withstand him. A threefold cord is not quite broken. And this is all about like two is better than one, three is better than one. So just take a moment, if you've been so focused on and worried about friendships and just struggling with that, just take a moment to sit with the Lord and say, God, what do you need from me? Where can I find these people? I know you're going to lead them to me, dear God. And I promise you, he will answer and just spend that time to just say like, God, search in me what I can grow through and how can I find people who can support me in that and just really really give this to God because I feel like friendships, dating relationships, all these things, there's a part of it that we can control but there's a part of it that God is guiding and has his hand in. So it's teamwork. See you're not even alone. You got God, you have teamwork and I know you will find these amazing friends these support systems because I've been exactly where you've been and I felt exactly how you have felt and it sucks and it hurts but I promise you it will get better it always does and I hope this encouraged you I hope I wasn't just rambling on for nothing I hope this made sense but I promise you that you will be able to find friends who support you who reach out to you and in the meantime be the best version of you you can be pour into God allow God to pour into you treat people so well and just love on other people and those friends will come I love you guys I hope this helps if you need anything please reach out once again if there's any topic you want to hear anything you're struggling with please reach out and I would love to record an episode for that. But I hope you guys have an incredible week and I will see all of your beautiful faces soon. Bye.